What it do, J. Crew? It's your girl Jasmine. I'm back with another video. Sorry, it's been a while since I posted. Things got super hectic and super crazy. But today I will be talking about going straight from an undergrad program right into a PhD program. My experiences with that, some pros, some cons, as well as some tips I have for you guys. So if you're interested, keep watching. So let's jump right into it. So I did five years in undergrad. So my last two I did, um, I did that because of track. So I had a fifth year through track um, and that's just how NCAA worked. So I did prepare for my application process for about two years. And I think that really played a big role in the transition going straight from undergrad into a grad program. So I graduated in December of 2019 and then I started in August of 2020. So I think that, um, that eight months was really nice for me to have off however most of it was during lockdown i didn't really get a chance to travel or do as much as i wanted to and i think that's like the first thing i would definitely suggest if you're going straight from undergrad into a grad program regardless if you graduate in december or in may just kind of take that time to do uh, more of what makes you happy but um we'll talk more about that later but anyway so yeah that was just my experience with that and i think um i wasn't as uh, I didn't really realize what that meant, tr that transition um, from undergrad into grad program meant, um, and that it was a lot bigger than just academics. So it was the moving and then having to kind of assimilate into a grad student role and kind of taking on more responsibilities, even just as a student and being in a different type of lab where you're like now like the senior person. And I think um, it really helped that in my undergrad, I had a lot of great grad students I looked up to. Um, but it was just like weird for me to be in that position. So I think that was one of like the main things I noticed was that in one of my labs, we had undergrads that like, I'm like now supposed to kind of transition into mentoring and kind of just helping them, um, progress in their research and academia, you know, life and learning all of that stuff. So that was one of like the big, biggest things I noticed like right away is that transition like socially. Um, but like, I guess socially as well as like academically and like your role and what you, what I want to start with the pros or I think are the pros of starting, um, your PhD right after your undergrad without like a gap year or without, um, doing like a master's. So the first thing, um, for me at least is that I started when I'm 23, so I'm going to finish when I'm a lot younger. So that means that like, I will graduate probably when I'm like, I don't like 27 or something, somewhere around there, um, which is still fairly young. But what really sucks and the other spectrum is that, of that is that I'm spending like my prime, like my 20s in grad school. But, you know, I think it'll be nice to be able to finish earlier. I mean, at least that's what I'm thinking right now. So this is also something that someone said on Twitter and I really saw it and I was like, wow, I resonate with that is that I'm young enough to be broke. So like, I don't have responsibilities. I don't have kids. I don't have a family. I don't have anything that's tying me to one place. So it was really nice to see that perspective and that like, I'm young enough to be broke and that like me getting this stipend that I'm getting is, is okay. It's livable. Like I don't have anything to take care of. Like I have a dog, but that's as much responsibility I have besides like my own like rent and like insurance and things like that I don't have other things other obligations so that's another way to put it you know young enough to broke still and another pro of going straight from undergrad into grad programs that you're like fresh out so you still are in that like school mood like school mode you know what I mean like so it's like kind of summer breaks like how in summer break like you're out of that school mode and you have to like take a few weeks to get back into it so it's kind of like that so like for me it was like I wasn't um so far out of um school that it took me a long longer to read or to write or to like pick up on assignments and just get accumulated to having to do assignments and things like that but with all of those pros obviously come some cons of going you know straight from undergrad to a phd program and i think for me one of the biggest things that i noticed and something that i've struggled myself with is kind of having that imposter syndrome knowing that people come in with degrees people come in with experience because they're already working in the field they've already worked in the field and kind of just seeing that and feeling really young and like ex as far as experience goes in addition, one of the cons, at least a con that I noticed, is that like people who come in with their masters or people who've um, been in another program before, they like know the reading really well. They know the readings, they know literature, they know like, they like name drop, they can like talk about things in ways that I can't because I haven't had that experience. And with that also comes other types of skills. So 
people who come in with a master's or come in um, from a program or job, whatever, may have more technical skills, like better at stats or know more about stats and kind of like that makes a big difference to me, like where I didn't have the stats training. So coming in, I'm kind of like starting at like square one where someone who has their master's or someone who's already done the work before, who's like used to or familiar with whatever we're working with already has that like foundation. So like a lot of me having to teach myself and kind of, um, going through these classes have a little bit of a harder time because I didn't have any prior knowledge. Another con that I think about is not having more of a break. And one, that was one of the things I said that was a pro, like not having that break, you know, just going right into from school to school, being in that school mode. But with that obviously comes on the other spectrum of me not feeling like I've had a break and it's easier to feel burnt out and you feel burnout quicker because you've been doing it for so long and kind of just like one continuous cycle. So that is another con that can also happen and um, something to think about as well if you're thinking about going from undergrad to grad right away. And with all of that and my personal experience, I do have some tips that I think may be helpful and some things I try to keep in mind or some tips that I've gotten from other people as well. So the first thing is like something I mentioned in the beginning of the video, which is to take time and just to enjoy yourself and to travel and to go on vacations and just see new places and new things which obviously might be harder now because of covid and the restrictions and everything but still finding a way to like really take a break and really take a breather before you start such a big journey such as you know the phd program and another big thing for sure is to find your hobbies find your hobbies and figure out what you like to do figure out what your non-negotiables are figure out what you will continue to do during your phd program before you start it's a lot easier to find this during your program because you don't have as much time, you don't have as much freedom. So you want to make sure you keep that in mind. Make sure you find your hobbies as well as finding your non-negotiables. And your non-negotiables could be anything like, I will stop working at 8 p.m. every night or like I will not work on Sunday or like I will not um, work like on the weekends at all, like set your boundaries. So like know your hobbies as well as set your boundaries, know your boundaries and try to stick with those boundaries. So that's all I have for you guys today. It was a fairly short video. I just wanted to get right to the chase and just share some tips and what I thought about going from undergrad to a PhD program. So if you guys have any other questions, wanna hear me talk more about my experiences and other tips or suggestions, make sure you drop them down below. Like this video, give me a little thumbs up, subscribe as well as share with your friends and family or whoever else you think may benefit from this video and as always i will see you guys next time on life 